What's up, everybody? Today, I have an actual bit size lesson for you. We're going to learn about the new chaperone method that you can use on your eloquent models. And this is brand new, just announced at Laracon 2024. Let's have a look. So I will pull up PHP Storm. And yeah, here I've set up a test route just so we can play around and demonstrate the concept. All right. So this is the Laracast code base. Let's pull in my series model, and why don't we do this? Let's display a page that lists all titles for a particular series. All right, series equals series find, and we'll do 30 days to learn Laravel. And I just happen to know that it has an ID of 210. All right, so now if I want all of the titles for each episode within that series, well, I could do something like this. Series episodes. So the relationship here is a has many. A series has many episodes. Very simple. All right. Now, why don't we pluck all of the titles from each of those episodes? And I think that should do the trick. So I use inertia uh, for the Laracast code base, but it's irrelevant in this example. You could use Blade or Livewire or um, whatever you want. Okay, so I have a test route, and I will send through the corresponding titles. Okay, and real quick, yeah, it's not an inertia lesson, but if I click through there, we accept the titles, we loop over them, and we display them, uh, or display each of them within a list item. Let's have a look in the browser. And yep, sure enough, it doesn't look great, but we do see all of the titles for that particular series. Okay, but next, I wanna figure out what SQL query or SQL queries are being executed as part of this request. So of course, I could pull in a package to do that, but if I wanted to do it manually, I might do something like this. I might pull in the DB facade, and then at the top of my route, I could say DB, listen for any queries being executed. And when one is, uh, that will receive a query executed event. And if you wanna type that, we can do it like that. Let's clean that up. And yeah, well, why don't we just dump it uh, to the console? So I could say dump event, and on the query executed event, if I scroll down, you'll see a two raw SQL method. Very helpful. So two raw SQL. And yeah, that should do the trick. So now I have Vite running behind the scenes, which means if I save this file, it should automatically reload. So if I switch over to my herd dumps panel, yeah, I can see we're running two queries, and this would make sense. One query to fetch that series, and another query to fetch all of the videos or the episodes associated with that series. Great. Okay, but now, yeah, if we switch back, it's just not clear what the series name is. And of course, we could put the series name right at the top. But just as an example, maybe this is search results or something like that, and you want to precede each episode title with the name of the series. And by the way, I, I guarantee at some point you've run into this. We all have. So what you might do is say, well, all right, let's do this. Let's loop over or map over all of the episodes. And in my case, that's actually a video instance. And let's clean that up and import it. And yeah, why don't we do this? Yes, I want to return the title of the video and that'll reproduce what we had before. But let's also proceed it with the title of the series, then a colon, and then the, uh, the title of the episode itself. And yeah, I think that should do the trick. So now if I switch back to my browser, is a little bit more clear. Every video is preceded with the name of the series. All right, but here's a problem. We've introduced, or we've inadvertently introduced an N plus one problem here. So if I pull up herd, yeah, take a look. Yes, we get the series. Yes, we get the videos. But now we have duplicate queries. So notice each one, select all from series where the ID is 210, 210, 210. We're just running the exact same query over and over again. All right, so what's the problem here? Think about it, what is the problem? Well, we have one query to find the series, and then we have another query to lazy load the episodes, but then we map over them, and for each one, we have a new relationship here. We go from the video or the episode back to the series. All right, so it's almost like we have a parent-child relationship. The series is a parent and the episode is a child. So we loop over the children and for each child, we wanna reach back to the parent to fetch the title of the series. Well, yeah, it makes perfect sense from that point of view. Each one of these uh, references is going to trigger a new query to lazy load the series back onto the video. 
All right, so yeah, in the past, you might deal with this by passing through maybe the series itself. And then in your view, you could reference that model rather than trying to fetch the series off of each individual uh, episode. Another option might be something like series with episodes. And then for each episode, uh, lazy load the series. And I think that might work, but that you end up with kind of a recursive issue where a series loads an episode, the episode loads the series, the series loads. I think this will work actually. And you know what? I should actually review how that works because uh, it does seem very recursive to me. But nonetheless, I don't know. I don't really like that. Uh, another option is to loop over all of the episodes and set the relationship uh, manually. So if you wanted to take that approach, you would do something like this. You'd say series, episodes for each one. That'll give you the video. And yeah, for each one, uh, we could say video set relation. So this is a way that we can manually assign a relationship uh, to a model. So if I want, or if I'm on a video model and I want to set the series relationship, I could say, well, that relationship should be equal to this model here, right? You don't need to lazy load it or you don't need to trigger a query to fetch it. I'm going to manually set it for you. So let's clean that up. And yeah, I think that's going to solve the problem. So if I bring back herd and I clear this, Let's go back to the browser, reload it. And now if I switch back, yeah, we've solved that problem once again. But ugh, it's horrible. And you would have to remember to run code like this every single time you fetch the titles. Uh, it's just not a good way to go. All right. So as part of the latest version of Laravel 11, we have a new chaperone method. And I think that's a pretty cute name, actually. I'll show you how to use it. If I switch over to the episodes relationship on my series model, all I have to do is add a call to chaperone. All right, so chaperone, what does chaperone mean? Um, well, if you ever went to a dance when you were in high school, you might've had a parent chaperone the dance, right? And what does the parent do? They keep an eye on you to make sure you're not getting into any funny business on that dance floor. Uh, yeah, that's how I at least think of it. The series is going to chaperone. And that means the series is gonna come along with this relationship so that if an episode looks up, it can see that series. This is a horrible uh, comparison, but you know what? It works in my head and maybe it'll work for you too. We're gonna chaperone so that we're always available uh, instantly to each of the child um, models. All right, and that'll do it. So check this out. I'm gonna come back and clear this out. Come back to PHP Storm. And now we fetch the series. We map over the episodes. We reference the title of each series. And if I come back and refresh, it all still works. But now if I switch over to herd, we don't have that N plus one problem anymore. And I just want to prove it to you just to make sure we're on the same page. If that were not here and I came back, now we have the N plus one problem. All right, so if you're working along and you try this out and the chaperone method isn't available to you, it's probably because you need to run a composer update uh, to fetch the latest version of Laravel 11. But yeah, tell me what you think. Uh, personally, I think the chaperone uh, method is pretty cute. Oh, and by the way, uh, what it's doing behind the scenes is effectively what we were doing within our routes file, where you loop over them and you call that set relation method. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can find it. Here's the chaperone method. And yeah, originally they were using the term inverse. I think uh, that was the original name of the method in the PR, but chaperone is much better. Anyways, we're gonna see after a query, we will apply the inverse relation. All right, let's just keep digging down. And there we go. Ultimately, it's going to set that uh, parent relationship um, like we were doing within our routes file. But yeah, you don't need to know this. It's only if you're curious. All right, so chaperone method on your eloquent model relationships, a small but incredibly useful feature as part of Laravel 11. Hey. Oh, what the? Isn't that cool?